Woods Elliott with Yo Elliott. You got shrimp questions, and I got your answers. Yo Elliott. Today we've got a question from this track athlete at Boston University. He keeps pulling his hamstrings. Check him out. Hi, I'm Sam Arsenault. I'm a student athlete at Boston University, and um, I was recruited there. Well, first of all, I'm about 6'1", um, about 180 pounds, and I was recruited to BU as um, a heptathlete, decathlete, and in senior year, my senior year, well, throughout high school, I was mainly a jumper, hurdle, or sprinter, and um, I had pretty good success with that. And um, but during my freshman year um, of college, I had a pretty tra traumatic hamstring pull um, in my bicep femoris, um, my left leg, and it was in my first heptathlon meet at Harvard, and um, so. Basically, I took some time off after that, um, did some rehab with my trainers at BU, and uh, yeah, my question for you is, um, what is the best possible um, strengthening routine that I can be on this summer um, with some unique exercises um, that'll really target my hamstrings and uh, get me back to running? Okay, thank you. All right, man, very first thing I want to do is thank you for your video question. Let's get right down to business. Now, I appreciate you sending me those extra clips where you did some squats and walking lunges and sprints and hurdles and things of that nature, but I was checking you out well before those action clips. In fact, as you were speaking, my attention was drawn to the fact that you've got an imbalance in the upper area, in your upper region, your, your neck, your shoulders. And the reason why that's significant is because the way your body is set up is such that if there is an imbalance in one area, it's go also going to be reflected in other areas of your body. There's no such thing as an isolated injury or anything isolated in our lives or in our bodies. Everything is interconnected and holistic. So generally speaking, you're going to end up speaking to uh, therapists and coaches about your injury or even if you go to a surgeon or a doctor about your pain and they're going to look right at that pain. They're going to look right at your hamstring. And that's effective in the early stages of getting the pain to be reduced and to uh, alleviating the injury. But ultimately for you to be able to sustain your particular activity as, a, as an athlete or to be the strongest version of yourself, which means you're totally balanced in every realm of your physique and, and life. We've got to take a look at everything that's going on because you're going to ultimately re-injure the same hamstring and it sounds like that's exactly what's happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an approach whereby we're going to recognize your body as a unit, see where your particular imbalances are and how they're causing the repetitive pulling of your hamstring. We're going to fix it all up so that doesn't happen anymore. Cool? All right. So. This is you, and just by looking at you in your video, and you've got that hyped up left shoulder look like, you, your bones are, have taken that particular positioning because the muscles in your neck, sternocleidomastoid, upper trapezius, a lot of the muscles up here have become very built up and tight, and, they, and they're, they're pulling that shoulder up. Now, I don't know why that's happening, and I don't know if it's a chicken or an egg situation, but the bottom line is that's evident by looking at you. So you've got really tight muscles on that side and really long muscles, if you could imagine, on that side. So that basically means that this side is a lot more cinched up than this side. You've got this going on, right? Now, in order for your body to be able to maintain some sort of homeostasis in your, your musculoskeletal system so that you can walk and talk and behave like a normal human being, it makes adjustments down below to sort of counteract imbalances elsewhere. Now, like I said, I don't know if it's a chicken or an egg, I don't know if you screwed yourself up here first and this is the byproduct, but, um, but I'm just taking, I'm going by what I can see. So I'm assuming that because you look twisted up top, that down below you're experiencing the following muscular imbalances. Your hip flexor 
is going to be very tight on this side, right? And uh, that's also going to be coupled with a weaker or a longer hamstring on that side. Your hip flexor on this side is going to be a little bit weaker, but it's going to be coupled with a built up hamstring, a really strong, tight, overworked, overburdened, stressed out hamstring on that side. So if you notice, if you take a look, you've got these cross patterns going on, whereby, uh, let's use a, a random percentage, whereby you've got like 60% strength overload on that side compared to the 40% on this side, right? Normally, a normal person would have 50-50. They'd say your left side is as right as your strong side. You don't have that going on, clearly just by looking at you. What happens is your body then, in order to counterbalance that, it will overdevelop, in particular the hip flexor for this situation, muscles on this side of the cross. Your body works in cross patterns. There are cross patterns throughout your entire body in the frontal and sagittal plane. It all begins in our brain. You know that your left brain uh, controls your right side of your body and vice versa. These crosses are happening all throughout our, our nervous system and our musculoskeletal system and far, far, far beyond that. But this is just a, an obvious manifestation of it. So you're going to end up with 40% strength on the hip flexor on that side. This creates, this cross pattern creates the balance. So like I said, I don't know if it's chicken or an egg, but you cannot expect down here to be fixed if up here is not fixed because your body is just going to continue to revert back to the to, to creating imbalance so for example to creating balance so for example if you start really attacking this area and I'm going to show you exactly where you're attacking and what you need to do if you start attacking this area to bring balance back so that you can stop hurting yourself but your your alignment is completely off up top this will slowly just make its way back into the dysfunctional position for a number of reasons, but namely because your nervous system has, has become very accustomed to this particular posture. So we have to deal with one in order to also effectively rehabilitate the other. Now, if you're, right now we're looking at you in the frontal plane, right? But if we were to look at you in the sagittal plane, there are also crosses that are happening also. So uh, when I say sagittal, like that's your face, this is your body. So we, we're looking at it this way, but there are also crosses from front to back, if you can imagine, this way also. So if, this is, if these are your hips here, and that's your, your body, those are your legs, we're looking at you sideways. So you've got cross patterns going on there also. What's happening is, on the side that you keep pulling the hamstring. You've got a longer, weaker hip flexor and an overdeveloped hamstring, a really strong, tight, taut, overworked hamstring. And then if we flip you around, you end up with the exact opposite, whereby your hip flexor is really overdeveloped and the hamstring is just kind of hanging there. So we're going to work on, on bringing balance to your body in both planes of motion. So I'm going to suggest a couple stretches and exercises for you to do, but keep in mind that this is, this is going to take some time. The best part of the information that I'm going to share with you is the fact that you now have a brand new paradigm associated with how you can attack your training programs that your, uh, your coach or the therapist is give, are giving you. You, you. you now have the ability to, to adjust accordingly. Um, so like I said, you've got to overdevelop. We can look at it this way again. Let's say 60% in your hip flexor here, and then only 40% strength in your hamstring there. That's in, this, in the frontal uh, sagittal plane, and then 40, 60. Hopefully you guys are following me, and this makes sense. So we want to bring balance back to everything here. Back to this. Stretch your neck on that side, on that left side that looks hiked up. You're going to, hopefully you can find some stretches. I'll create some videos eventually, but... Uh, I've got other videos where I show you how to stretch the neck. You want to stretch the upper trapezius, the sternocleidomastoid, um, a lot of the muscles that are forcing you this way. Even I, I'd imagine that your pec minor and your bicep are probably pretty tight there also. And if, I don't want to go too deep with you, but essentially you've got way more than that going on. 
But to alleviate your problem right now, stretch that crap out. And you would imagine that I'd say strengthen here, um, but I have a good feeling that if you just focus on the stretching, the balance of strength will start to um, ultimately level out. So just bring this down and ultimately that will go up over time. But you can also do like, you know what I do suggest, you do some single arm shrugs on that side, single arm presses, single arm rows. Bring the strength up here, bring the strength down here. We bring strength down by stretching. So we attack the top and we also attack the bottom. So what we want to do is we want to bring the strength down in your, in your hip flexor on this side by, um, by stretching the hip flexor on the side that you're not injuring. The side that's tighter. And again, you know, ultimately I'm going to have to start asking you guys to send me more comprehensive videos. I appreciate your movement assessment, but I'm going to need to be able to look at you guys a lot deeper to be able to give you solid answers or closer to solid answers than these ones. But I'm assuming that your hip is really anteriorly pelvic, uh, anteriorly tilted on this side. So I'm going to ask you to stretch the hip flexor on that side. Um, and then you would ultimately need to strengthen the hip flexor on this side and stretch the hamstring on the side that you keep injuring. My assumption is that because of these multiple imbalances, you are, um, what's happening is that your, your lower le your leg, your hamstring, has just, is completely pissed off. It's, it's, it's taken so much of the brunt of the pain and the pressure because of these imbalances, it was the breaking point in your body. It's just the, we're looking at the etiology of your problem, but it's just the manifestation of a bigger problem you got going on. And even this is superficial. So, um, with the lower body, uh, what you can do is to strengthen the hip flexor on the side that you keep it injuring, the hamstring, is you could do single leg jack knives. Google it, or um, I'll see if I have some pictures or something that I could throw up for you. Strengthen the hip flexor on that side, stretch the hamstring on that side. And then you're going to do the exact opposite here, whereby you're going to stretch the hip flexor, you're going to strengthen the hamstring on the opposite side. Bring it up so that it can help out the other side. That's the thing with that other hamstring. He's not getting any help. So we want to bring up the strength on the opposite side. And the best exercise I'm going to say to do for that would be supine hip extension with knee flexion. It's quite a mouthful. With your foot on a ball, a Swiss ball. You're going to pull your, the ball up underneath you while you're keeping your hip extended. That's going to do a number of things, including uh, strengthening the, the glutes on that side. Your, your glutes are probably a little bit weaker on that side. Um, and also getting the, the hamstring at both tie-ins. We, we want it at the hip where it helps extension and flexion at the, at the hips and also at the knee. And, and the supine hip extension is going to do that for you as opposed to just like leg curls or even like good mornings. You can do single like good mornings and things of that nature. Um, that's that's a, a general idea of what you're dealing with and how you can go about stretching and strengthening properly to bring balance back to your body. Buddy, I really hope that helps. Um, send me a, uh, a message down below or, or, or leave a comment. Let me know if any of this makes sense, if it's applicable to your current situation, and if you can begin Implement, implementing these strategies to bring your body back into balance so that you can be the strongest version of yourself and so that you can really manifest the strength physically, emotionally, and spiritually that you are meant to. Because otherwise, you're in pain, you're pissed off, you're definitely not your strongest version. And, uh, and that's it. Thanks for your question. Guys, keep sending me your video questions. i got a bunch of them in the queue. I will be cranking out more of these this week. Talk to you next time. Yo, Elliot.